Hello and welcome to the Ridiculously Good VA Show with Tracy Daviero. If you are a virtual assistant or want to be one, this is the place to learn the tips and tricks you need to become a ridiculously good VA. I've been a part of the VA industry since 1998 and I'm excited to get to know you and help you build an amazing business. Let's go. Hey there, welcome to another episode of the podcast that teaches you how to be a ridiculously good virtual assistant. Today we're talking about how to make decisions more easily in your VA business. Notice that I didn't say make better decisions, but make decisions more easily. Today's quote is from Jim Rohn. You cannot make progress without making decisions. Progress only comes from taking a step forward, and that means making decisions. You have to learn to do it and do it well so that you can make that progress. Let's go. One of the things that slows virtual assistants down in business is the struggle to make decisions. I know this because you tell me. You all tell me every single day. And some of you actually don't tell me. But I like to think that's mainly because you don't even realize that that's what the problem is. But when we talk about what you're stuck on in your VA business, whether it's getting clients, networking, making money, your mindset, or even time management, the root of the problem can very often be traced back to not making a decision. And like I said in today's intro, I don't mean making the right decision. Sometimes we make the wrong decision and that scares us into making another one. That happens. But then you should go and get some support to help you move forward. But I digress. What I'm talking about is simply not making a choice about something and then still expecting to move your business forward. Like Jim Rohn says, it's nearly impossible. So today we want to talk about making choices and overcoming the common obstacles that hinder our ability to decide. If you've ever found yourself stuck in the paralysis of indecision, afraid to make the wrong choice, you are in the right place. Number one, identifying your challenges. Have you ever wondered why decision making can be so daunting? Whether it's the fear of making the wrong choice or feeling lost in a sea of too many options, we all face the challenges when it comes to decision making. Let's explore some of these challenges and how we can tackle them. One common stopping point for virtual assistants is the fear of making the wrong decision. Many of us have experienced this kind of anxiety, afraid that a choice we make is going to lead to the wrong thing or an unfavorable outcome. But what if instead you reframed your perspective on mistakes and embraced the idea that every decision is actually an opportunity to learn? You've probably heard that we learn from our mistakes, and it really is true. If you reframe the idea of what could go wrong into something you can learn from, it definitely makes it easier to decide. The problem is that we often don't know what's right because we haven't done the thing that we're trying to do before. It's normal to not want to make the wrong decision, but there are ways to decide and move forward. Getting help with a tough decision is a really simple way to fix this particular challenge. Another challenge is very common for VAs. (laughs) being a perfectionist. Hands up if that's you. And yes, I do have my hand up. Striving for perfection can paralyze us. But consider this, you make countless decisions effortlessly every single day, from what time to get up to what to wear. You probably don't even realize that all of these things are decisions, but they are. The key is understanding that not every decision needs to be the perfect decision. Sometimes done is better than perfect. The main objective should be to move forward, and the only way to do that is to choose. Imagine sitting on the edge of your bed in your pajamas and missing an entire day of work simply because you can't decide which color socks to wear. We're keeping ourselves stuck in every way when we do this in business too. Get off the bed, put a pair of socks on, and change them at lunch if they aren't the right ones. Do you get the idea? Good. Number two, understanding yourself. Now let's dive into understanding ourselves better to make informed decisions. It's crucial to address issues like low self-esteem and uncertainty about what you want and the fear of the unknown. If low self-esteem is something that holds you back, remember that your brain tends to amplify negative thoughts. I've told you this before. In a brain health training I once attended, I learned that it takes the brain five positive messages to forget about one negative message. So I ask you, how negatively are you talking every day? To yourself 
about yourself. And yes, I also mean talking in your own head. Even if you don't say things out loud, your brain is hearing them. And I don't know about you, but I have millions of thoughts in my head all day long, many of which I never say out loud. And many of them are not positive. It's really important to counteract this. You're not doing yourself any favors if you aren't really focusing on positive thoughts and messages as often as you can. But what about not being clear about what you want? Sometimes decisions we have to make are about choosing what's best for us, not what others think is best. If you don't know what you want, others cannot help you. And so you have to sit down and get really clear on what it is that you do want. I have often found the best way to do this is by brainstorming or brain dumping and then categorizing these things so that you can look at them more clearly. Here's an example. If you want more clients, let's brain dump that a bit. That can be a paralyzing decision, what to do, how to find them. Here is how the brain dump can go. You want a business that's successful. You don't want to go back to a job. You want to make more money. You want to pay for stuff like your household bills, or you want to pay for a vacation. You want to not be stuck in front of your computer all day. You want to volunteer at Jimmy's school. These are all the things that we want, and we're very clear on them. So we need to write them all down, as many things as you can, and then start to pull them all together. What do you really need here? Well, from this list, you want to be in charge of your own schedule. You want to earn enough money to make a difference to your household. You want to offer services that help you work on your own timetable or schedule that clients pay you well for. That's a way of categorizing things and really looking at it to say, this is what I want. I want clients, but why do I want them and what does that look like? These are the simple decisions that you can use to help you get really clear on what you want. And when you know what you want, then you can make the decisions that support the activities that help you get those things. So if a client wants to hire you to do their client care and that means you have to check their email a hundred times a day, that might not fit in with your schedule. You can choose to not work with that client. But if they want you to manage their monthly social media content or set up monthly group coaching sessions on Zoom, that does fit on your own schedule. So these are the kinds of decisions that we can make by knowing what it is that we really want. Take some time to understand your priorities and align your decisions with the values that you have. But what if we have too many choices? Virtual assistants are famous for going down the research rabbit hole. More information is not always better. If you have a sea of choices, you simply have to narrow things down. If I give you three choices for anything, you could probably choose one. But if I gave you 50, you would have a lot more trouble. It would take more time and it might actually paralyze you. It's one of the reasons that we suggest offering a client the choice of three packages to choose from. Same thing with Goldilocks. Think about Goldilocks and the beds. One's too small, the other's too big, the third one is just right. We're comparing the three and coming up with the best solution for us from those three. Your clients are going to do the same thing with three choices of packages. And so are you. So choose three to compare and then ask yourself which one will get you to where you want to go in the best way possible. Number three is practical strategies. Let's talk about how to improve your decision-making skills. First things first, set a time limit on research on the consideration or the consideration phase. No rabbit holes, just give yourself all the tools you need to succeed here. That means setting a realistic deadline and holding to it. At the end of your time limit, Identify the top three options, just like our client packages. And then consider the pros and cons of each of those three options for yourself. How will each of them impact your business, but also your health, your family, your goals, and whatever else you can think of? When we look at how a decision will impact us, like the pros and cons, it can often help us make that decision easier and faster. Let's go back to the services we were just talking about. If we look at offering social media services for our clients, that can impact our family life, health, and business in a positive way, right? We have more time. It's kind of easy work. It's definitely good money, or it can be. But it can also impact us in a negative way. If we don't have any social media training or experience, and we find it hard to get great clients. So we want to do that, but we need to do other things first in order to get there. 
which in this list outweighs the other? I would say the pros do. That more time, easy work, good money versus hard to get clients. I think we can find out how to get clients. And that's where your decision has to be made. How do we get help to get the clients we need? Well, you call Tracy. That's what you do. But you get the idea. We do the pros and cons and then we say, this makes sense to do. Let's find the fastest path there. And remember, indecision can definitely have con consequences. Think about not leaving enough time to drive to where you need to get to. Not being able to decide when to leave can make you late for whatever you're trying to get to. If you're going to your mom's for tea, that might not matter terribly. Um, but if you are going to a concert, you could miss the act that you actually paid to see. If you take forever to send a client proposal, you could miss out on getting the client's business. Clients often hire one of the very first few people that they talk to. Be the first, don't be the last. And number four is building confidence. The last thing I want to talk about is building your confidence in decision making. Done is better than perfect. I know you perfectionists out there are saying no, but it is. It is. I'm a perfectionist and I can totally relate. But I also know that it's true. I can assure you that our good enough is way better than someone else's perfect. We're holding ourselves to such a high standard that we can't even reach it. How does that make any sense? Think of all those small decisions that you make every single day. What time to get out of bed, what to have for breakfast, what time to start work, when to check email, when to take a break, what music to listen to, what type of coffee to have, and so on and so on and so on. We are making decisions all day long, whether we realize it or not, and they aren't hard to make because we don't really think of a lot of them as decisions. So we've proved that you can make decisions. So let's empower you to make more significant decisions with confidence. Start with small ones, reflect on why you made that choice and think about how easy or how challenging it was. This kind of self-awareness builds your confidence over time. You have to give yourself that confidence. Working all alone all day means you have to work harder at being good and supportive with yourself. Don't forget about those negative thoughts versus the positive thoughts. We need to balance those out and really hit us heavy with the positive. We're definitely all our own worst critic. As you reflect on the decisions, think about how you would support a client or a colleague or a friend or a family member if they made the very choice you're making right now. I'll say it again, accept that nothing is perfect. I should probably say that in a different way. I mean, accept that nothing is perfect. Your good enough is often more than sufficient. Embrace the journey of learning from every decision you make, and you're going to find that making choices becomes a skill that you can actually sharpen over time. It's better to make a decision and move forward and then course correct if you need to. So as always, let's circle back to today's quote from Jim Rohn. You cannot make progress without making decisions. What is it that you want? What do you really want? Decide what you need to get it and then get going. If decision making is something that you are having a lot of trouble with, get some help with it. I can help. It's the only reason I'm here at all, as all of you know, to help you become a ridiculously good VA. I've helped hundreds of VAs who are stuck, get moving, and I would love to do the same thing for you. We can work together in a number of ways. I take private clients, my monthly mastermind group, the virtual circle, or my plan to profit group coaching program that's going on right now. Or you can enroll in any of my self-study trainings. I have so many options to move you forward. Check them out in the show notes for this episode. That's all I've got for you this week. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Ridiculously Good VA Show. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. For more great resources for your VA business, visit my website at yourvamentor.com. I'll see you back here next time.